Hi. So today I'm out in the Badlands, as you can see. And uh, what I wanted to talk about is I get a lot of questions about what camera someone should get when they're starting their journey into either photography or filmmaking. And a lot of times I think I could recommend a camera, but at the same time, the camera that I always default to is the iPhone or a smartphone camera, for example. And I think the reason is because they've come such a long way and you always have it with you. They're also discreet, so you can take them anywhere. You don't have to worry about this big bulky camera, something else to bring, memory card, battery. It's with you all the time and it's super convenient. So today I thought it'd be fun to film a whole sequence of some sort out here in the Badlands, testing that to see you know, if I can make something just as good as if I were to make something with my Sony a7S III, which is what I'm filming with now. Now to help me with that is, uh, what I'll be using today is this Sandmark wide lens. And uh, to help me get it onto my phone is this Sandmark Pro phone case. Now, this is not a sponsored video. However, they did send me these two products to test. So I'm gonna unbox these in real time right now with everybody. And so you can see my honest opinions about how they are, how they fit, how they feel. So the first thing up is the phone case. Now, with the lens, as I'm not 100% sure, but when I read it, I think it comes with a clip, so you don't need this phone case, but I think if you have an iPhone anyways, I think you should always have a case. I literally just broke my screen yesterday right before making this because my other case was cracked. And now this case feels really nice. It has a leather style material up front here, feels really nice, and a aluminum mount so that you can screw the lenses right on to this. As well, it has this really nice soft backing and the buttons feel really nice and clicky. As a comparison, the case that I'm using right now is just the original iPhone leather case, which I usually get because I love how well they're built, except that this one broke. So this is perfect timing. So we're gonna pull this off, get this guy on. And it looks and feels basically like the Apple case feels so good. And it has like this beautiful lens mount here. So there's that. Next is the wide lens. Now, when they asked me which lens I wanted to test out, I picked the wide lens because on the iPhone, the wide lens right now, especially the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which, which is what I'm using, it is the worst camera out of all three. It has a 2.4 aperture versus the wide lens, which is a 1.8 aperture. So it's really bad in low light. And I find that the distortion is quite bad as well. And to be honest, I only really use it in really good lighting conditions. And for landscapes, I don't really use it for portraits at all because you shouldn't, but I guess we'll see how well this fares even in a portrait situation. So first, let's see what we get here. Oh, wow. You get another case in the box, which is super rad. This one is just plastic though. I wasn't expecting that. And this other pro case is leather and this one feels way better. I would much rather use this one, but if you're into the, this plastic style, then that would be good too. And then, let's see, the next thing is, comes in this nice little soft pouch that you can carry, carry around. Yep, it has that clip that I had mentioned. So if you want, you can just screw the lens onto here and just quickly pop it onto your, the back of the camera instead of having to mount a case if you don't like carrying on a case, but I think that's not, for me and then the main piece of this is the lens so you get a nice microfiber and the sandmark lens which is hefty it has like a really nice build to it nice lens cap and then this super nice metal solid solid build and that glass looks real nice there we go screws on real nice Perfect. So yeah, you can, um, I'm gonna record the screen in a second and show you the difference in, in the wideness here. But uh, here, let me show you guys. So this is what it looks like regular 
as I'm recording the screen. And this is what it's gonna look like once it's mounted on. So, really nice. And the quality looks awesome. And I can tell you right now that the distortion is so much better uh, comparatively to when, to the, to the, to the iPhone yeah like if you look at this one the iPhone is a little bit wider but if you look at the bottom towards your legs it just has this like, this really weird distortion and once you mount this one on uh, to the right one yeah it just has a nice wide view but so much more usable especially in filmmaking which is what I'm gonna be focusing on today all right so everything that you see after this point is going to be shot from the iPhone, even if, it, if, even if we jump back to a vlog situation like this, I'm gonna strictly be using my iPhone and this lens to film the rest of this video and the sequence that you will see coming up. All right, and so ready? And three, two, one. So there you have it. So what you just saw in that sequence, including the photos, was all shot on the iPhone and the Sandmark lens. Now, my first initial thoughts are, I would be completely happy using that for certain parts of my work. I think the footage looked amazing. The photos were obviously completely blew me away as well. And I really enjoyed using it. I'm gonna jump back to the Sony so that I can give you my final thoughts on the Sandmark lens with the iPhone. And I'll do that in three, two, one. So what I would say to anyone looking to start creating content today is to start by using your phone and especially the iPhone, whether it be video or photo, pick yourself up something like this Sandmark lens to help you in certain situations. One of the main reasons is because the barrier to entry is really low. The cost of getting some accessories like this lens is only about $100 starting. You have a lot of flexibility there. You don't have to dive right into buying something and investing in a professional camera that can cost upwards of thousands of dollars. And you can just start creating content. And as you get better and practice and start to outgrow this, then you can start to consider getting something like a more pro camera and that's why as i mentioned before when someone asked me what camera they should get to start creating content i generally just say hey start with your iphone see what you can do hone your skills and then move on and i think something like this is a really great option now you might be asking why even bother getting uh a, an attachment lens and what i would say is as i had mentioned before the main lens the wide lens is the best camera on the phone and even though the other two lenses are suitable they're really only good in really ideal situations so whenever you can you want to use that main lens and when you buy something like this sandmark lens you attach it to the main lens and you get really really good quality and to prove that point i'm going to take two shots one with the ultra wide on the iphone which is approximately 13 millimeters and I'll attach this to the main lens, the wide lens, and this lens comes out to be about 16 millimeters, and you can definitely see a difference. So you can see that there is an advantage into using this lens attached to the main camera on your iPhone. Now, the one thing I would say if I had to critique that sequence is I wish I had an ND filter to preserve the 180 degree shutter rule. Now, if you don't know what I just said there, that's a whole other conversation for a different day. But the great thing is Sandmark also makes ND filters that can screw on to this lens because this lens actually has threading 
uh, on it that you can attach a variable ND. And along with that, they make different types of lenses. Now, as, as I mentioned before, this is the uh, wide lens. It's about uh, equivalent of a 16 millimeter focal length. They also make a macro, a tele, a fisheye. And uh, they have this really interesting anamorphic style lens that uh, I was super interested in and hopefully I get a chance to try it one day. I think those are all really great options to get you started. And as I mentioned, they're only about $100 starting. But I think in situations where I can't bring this big bulky camera around, the footage that came out of this, I was so impressed by, I will have no issues filming or shooting photos with it. Now, if you're interested in any of these lenses, I will leave a link in the description below. Again, this video isn't sponsored, but I was super happy to test this out to see what type of content I could pull out of just my phone and this lens. And I was super blown away and super happy about that. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, I would really appreciate a subscribe or a like. It would really help out the channel. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.